Black Hill Brides, are you ready for the next comic? Let's see a clap. All right. Okay, this next comic coming to the stage. Very good friend of mine on November 20th. She'll be opening up for Adam Burke at, uh, at Town Hall. And then uh, she'll be opening up for Allie Clayton. And uh, December 6th, at the, yeah, December 6th at Impulse. Please welcome to the stage my good friend, Vicki Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. 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 Hi! How are you guys? Good. I see some people left. That means I'm not going to get that many me and you pictures tonight. That hurts my heart. So, Bookworm is my comedy home. So, since I am at home. Oh, come on. <laughs> I do this every time. It's just like the men in my life. <laughs> Baby, cause I'm at home. No hands, thank you. I'm going to do it. Do it at home. Take off my shoes. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yes, I know, right? Oh my God. <laughs> 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 that on my day. Oh. Freedom, right? Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm talking about. You should go as a slave for Halloween. <laughs> They won't get it. They won't get it. <laughs> How y'all doing? <laughs> oh, my name is Vicki Lynn. If you do not know me, please do not let this first impression be your lasting impression of me. I usually look good. Um, I am a narcissist. That's mine. I'm a narcissist. I'm watching you. I love you, Michael. And I particularly don't have a problem with being a narcissist. The problem is I'm a narcissist with children. Yeah, I constantly have to remind myself to care about them as well. Um, doesn't always work. For instance, we were doing the little picnic thing, you know, they were younger and was putting on airs, making things look good for them, you know. So we're sitting there, and we're having our little family picnic. You know, they had bologna sandwiches I made at home. I had Subway. <laughs> so, I look and I see a pit bull barreling towards me and those other people I was with. And my natural instincts took over and I took off running. <laughs> so, when I made it to the safety of the vehicle, freedom. I have no more tolerance for kids. I have four at home. I don't do hoo hoo hoo. No, I don't do that. Sit down. Yeah. Is that me on there? No, oh, you get a pass. Go sit down. I won't cuss at you like you're black. Sit down. That's right. He has taken over. <laughs> yes, so I see a pit bull. We got that part right? Barreling towards me and those other people I was with. I made it to the safety of the vehicle when it took off running. Okay, we're up to speed. We're up to speed. So when I made it to the safety of the vehicle, I rolled down the windows and I yelled to my children, Run! And get the baby! Because he couldn't walk. So. Don't judge me. They all made it. I still get child support. So, when the oldest, who was able to process what had just happened, made it, he's like, Mom! And he was out of breath because he got asthma and he had to get the baby. So, Mom, why did you leave us? And I couldn't look at this child and tell him, I forgot to care about you. Because that probably would have sent him into therapy, and that's more money not invested in me. So, I came up with the most brilliant thing to say. I said, well, if something had happened to one of your siblings, the other three would still need a mother. Don't be selfish. Buckle up. All right? And that's how I feel about my kids. You know, they're, they're little extensions of me, and because I'm a narcissist, and they're little extensions of me, that's why they got to stay around. No, that's the only reason. And food stamps. So, I love food stamps. <laughs> so, not only am I a narcissist, but I'm a bit neurotic. 
I know you can't tell right now, but I am a bit neurotic, you know. I um, I feel like I know, you know, I'm a pretty good judge of character. I feel like I'm afraid of a lot of things, especially white men. Um, <laughs> no, I know. And I know you're probably thinking, oh, the ones with the pointy hats. No, no. I know what they do. I'm not worried about them. <laughs> what I am concerned about is white men in square wire rim glasses. Because I think they're all serial killers. And if they have two bridges on those square wire rim glasses, I think they're all pedophiles. Let that be a lesson, Freedom. Two bridges, square glasses, pedophile run, okay? <laughs> all right. But that thinking has kept me safe all these years, that and being fat, because you cannot kidnap fat girls off the street. So, I think the problem is, I know what the pedophile does, you know, I know his accessory, I know the serial killer's accessory, I don't know the rapist's accessory. And me being a narcissist, I think that if there's a rapist in this room, that I'm gonna be the one he follows and rapes in the alley because I'm fat and he can't kidnap me and take me somewhere. So, <laughs> I'm not concerned about the rape so much as I'm concerned about the judgment, you know? Like, what if I got on Spanx and, and I really do have a hole in my panties right now? What if he judges me because I have a hole in my panties? <laughs> like when he, he, you know, he gets to the party, he's got my pants undone and he looks, he's like, but then it proceeds anyway. <laughs> now I'm being raped and I feel inadequate. <laughs> we women don't need that in our lives, okay? Like I said, uh, oh, oh, I forgot. Like, so the most important, I'm not afraid of the rape because I have four children. I wouldn't feel it. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit neurotic. Now, this is the part where things take a turn for the worse. I'm gonna need somebody to get freedom, a coloring book. Keep him occupied, busy for a minute, about three. I was going to Chicago a lot when I first started doing comedy. And um, I was going to the open mics up there. And I need to look sexy when I do this, so I'm gonna put my wig back on. Here, hold on, hold on. Oh snap, look white people, watch. gotta peek into a scary place. So, like I said, I was going to Chicago, I was doing a lot of open mics up there, and um, I fell in love with the men in Chicago. And my coochie got excited. And my coochie took off and climbed up the highest building, stood on the leg and said, I'm gonna jump on all those dicks. I was like, what? <laughs> no coochie, don't do that, no. Oh. And since I can't pull my coochie out right now, have somebody come up here and be my visual aid. Jern, would you come here, baby? Come here and sit in this chair for me, sexy. Come here. Come on, love muffin. Come here, sexy. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, Packers. And Packers. Mmm, I hate Wisconsin. So, like I said, my coochie's on the ledge and it's threatening to jump on all these penises, right? And I'm like, I have to talk my coochie down off this ledge. So, John here is gonna be my coochie. Since I can't pull my coochie out and talk to it in front of y'all nice people. Yeah, and he's fuzzy, just like my coochie. My coochie might be his color, I don't know, I ain't seen it in a while. Yeah. Baby, does our coochie have John? Does she look a little yellow? All right, you good. All right, go to the doctor. We gotta go to the doctor. Okay, so, get to the point. This is the conversation I have to have with my coochie when we go to Chicago. Coochie, coochie don't do it. I know, coochie. I know you wanna jump on all those penises, but if you jump, you'll commit whole suicide. No. And if you commit whole suicide, you'll go to whole hell. You don't want to go to whole hell, Coochie. Oh, it's a dark place with tight eyes. <laughs> no! We're standing in the forefront of whole hell right now.
right now. The tunnel to whole hell is probably made of herpes bumps. I know, Coochie. Everybody has herpes. It just takes the right person to bring it out. Now, <laughs> Super Gonorrhea is probably standing at the gate and he's wearing nothing but a cape and his penis looks like a split cigar. No, gross, right? Uh, it's fully formed babies crawling out of used condoms in whole hell. I don't know how they got there. Something happened. R. Kelly pissing on little girls at abortion clinics in whole hell. Oh, Coochie, don't do it. Don't do it. Your daddy's there, he still won't give you any attention. I know, right? <laughs> Don't do it, Coochie. I know Coochie. <laughs> Coochie! You wanna go buy batteries, Coochie? And no, you love that, don't you, Coochie? And we'll get the good kind this time. Yeah, with the rabbit. Yes, we'll do it. And, and for the rabbit. Huh. Yeah, single girls know what I'm talking about when I say that rabbit, right? Some of the single guys, too. <laughs> Just don't do it, Coochie. I know. Could you want to go walk down by the Rock River and feel better about your odor? We can do that, Coochie. I know you've been through so, 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 so much. And four kids, I'm ruined. Um, and I know it's been so, so, so long. That is not a joke. I will be accepting penis donations after the show. <laughs> Put them in a tip cup. So... I know. I know, Coochie. I know. You've been through so much, but I promise you, just come down off this ledge. We'll go and get some batteries. We'll go walk down by the Rock River, and I'll go get another bucket of ice cream, and we'll get back to Beloit, Wisconsin, where there are absolutely no penises you want to jump on. Okay, Coochie? <laughs> All right, baby. Y'all give it up for my Coochie John. <laughs> All right, so, hey, Willie, turn it off now. I'm done being funny. Turn it off. All right, now give it to me. Before I get out of here, I would like to read something that I wrote for the bookworm and Miss Rhiannon. No, because I'm that spectacular. No, oh, I mean, I'm sorry. I'm so used to saying that because this place and Rhiannon are so spectacular. Sorry. Narcissism. Thank you. All right, so this is called Goodbye, My Sweet. Goodbye, my sweet, sweet place where I honed my craft. My sweet, sweet place where I made the masses laugh. My sweet, sweet baker that fed me brownies and cookies. My sweet, sweet Rhiannon with whom I speak fluid boobies. Yes, we speak boobies. It's a sweet, sweet place I spent a comedian's term. I shall miss all the sweet, sweet moments that is the bookworm. I love all the sweet, sweet souls with whom I met there. Yes. So shall we meet again in another sweet, sweet somewhere? Goodbye, my sweet, sweet bookworm, bakery and cafe. Thanks for giving poets, comedians, misfits, and now diabetics a place to play. All right. Thank you. My name is Vicki Lynn. If you have not taken a picture with me, please do so. All right. I love you, bookworm. I will miss you. Oh, uh, you just like. You have a whole little strip tease here, didn't you? Oh, I should have worn your purple. I was gonna buy your purple scarf for the Prince thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like your your booby sisters with uh, with Rhiannon, but I feel like we have like we have like matching conflicted orifices. Cause like yo, know, cause you got the suicidal coochie, right? I got a suicidal coochie, and I got IBS. That means I got a spontaneous anus. <laughs> Speaking of spontaneity.